announcements that is attendance link will be shared in the chat window during the session kindly post your questions to professor amrita himre i professor rushali deshmukh welcome all for the day 2 session 1 on research methodology of one week ISK is sponsored organized by department of computer engineering jspm rajeshwar college of engineering pune it gives me immense pleasure to introduce dr swaj deshmukh an associate professor of mechanical engineering government college of engineering karan he is also a professor and dean research and development at saoe pune since 2010 Sir received a day. He has more than twenty years of teaching and research experience. Under his guidance, six students have pursued their PhD. In two thousand twelve, he received the Young Scientist Award for fast track research project from the Department of Science. for sensorless xy from vigyaniki radiance iit bombay for design and development of 3d microfabrication system in 2008 he is also the recipient of the international award at the nano conference he was a director iit bombay for development as a principal minister he has grants of around 34 lakhs for sensorless xy picture mechanism for precision application he has received a fund of 14 lakhs from bst for design and development of sensorless linear compression organization he has received fund of 15 lakhs from selects america jubilee hills hyderabad as a co investigator also he has received the uh, fund of 50 lakhs from rajiv gandhi technology commission government of maharashtra for c bed energy generation pilot power plant he has received the grant from bcu pune of He has also worked on several consultancy projects. He has authored several peer-reviewed publications in national and international journals and conferences. Today, sir is going to deliver a session on research methodology. So I request you, sir, to kindly start the session. Am I audible? Deshmukh sir. Yeah. Ha. Yes, sir. You are. Am I audible? Yes, sir. So, thank you, madam, for inviting me for uh, this uh, workshop, or maybe you can say it is a uh, refresher course, which will give a brief outline of the research methodologies and data analysis. Uh, basically, my intention is to uh, give you some idea about what does that modeling and how it is to be done. and what does that simulation mean so how to represent each and every thing into the mathematical equation and uh, how to handle those mathematical equation most of the time we face a difficulty when we are uh, dealing with a mathematical equation हेलो सर Basically so my idea is to give an a very simple kind of an simulation and we'll move towards uh step by step uh, towards an uh, higher levels and we'll go for a very complicated cases also and so that is what on uh, basically a thing like basically what is that uh, necessity why we want to do an mathematical analysis 
means basically mathematics means it is in a kind of in a set of uh, maybe a, a differential equation maybe an uh, algebraic equations which describes the relation between input and output of the system of uh, is that then you are going to provide some input and then determining the output so to ultimately do in a kind of a prediction maybe we are using for forecasting purpose maybe prognostic or diagnostic purpose and design performance evaluation so many other objectives will be satisfied as satisfied for them. so this all is nothing but an expectations from your model that is what it is a uh, basically basic uh, idea so basically what does that modeling means 90% case if you just go through the history of the entire uh, science development or technological development you may find in a search dots this kind of this people From since the uh, in the, that is uh, from the inverse ball, but ultimately, what was happened when he was observing? What he has done it, done it. He has connected some things, and that's what he created in a law. So that is what in a knowledge. So that is basically idea behind it, and what that is, we need to connect this with a kind of a relation, kind of equations, and that you want to simulate. what is the basically idea behind it is that why won't you want to model it basically modeling means evaluating in a system purpose that is first idea why evaluating means if my system is something like this this is my input and i want to have an output we'll see this in more detail and this is my system i want to connect this output with this input depends on the properties of this all system and i want to know if i am going to provide an one unit of input here what will be the output maybe 1.2 maybe 0.5 why it is that so that kind of a performance you want to observe it then you want to predict the performance maybe an experimental design tool as an experimental design maybe we are going to compare a multiple system okay having an some small parametric हेलो सुहा सर फिजिकल मॉडल यू आर रिप्रेजेंटिंग बिहेवियर ऑफ दिस फिजिकल मॉडल विद सेट ऑफ सर्टेन इक्वेशन एंड दैट इज व्हाट ऑन अ मैथमेटिकल मॉडल और मे बी एन इट इज आल्सो कॉल्ड एज एन एनालिटिकल एंड दैट इज सेकंड स्टेप वी कैन डू इट एंड थर्ड केस दिस इज फर्स्ट स्टेप first idea how to do it analyze second idea is that we represent entire system into a certain equation and third one you you provide in a system description with in some random elements maybe monte carlo analysis something and that kind of a model is called as a function you given a random input and you just observe what is going to happen and based on that it will define a relation between input and output and that is what an account model so basically when you are doing an analysis uh, so we we come across with two thing one is uh, analytical simulation and second one is simulation in analytical you may have an a kind of an a case like an i will just uh, i will i may be talking about uh, more mechanical cases uh, but uh, Uh, so that is what it is uh, my intention so basically you may be using any of the uh, differential equation
what are the parameter maybe cx dot or this c is a constant k is constant and kind of things so that is the basically uh, a simple or easy representation of your behavior of your system and that mathematical model is maybe in a multiple equations maybe in a x1 or kind of an equations maybe in a first equation and second equation like in a finite element we do it so you can have in a multiple such equations and you can solve it that is uh, that gives in a very simple and easy way of getting in a prediction or maybe uh, identifying in a behavior of the system another one represent that system into a more complicated fashion means i will i will now change the c I'll change the scale. I will change this mass during the simulation itself, and that is that is what in a more complicated. I am going to give in a variation in each and every step. Maybe each and every step sometimes, or sometimes one or two steps, and it depends on kind of in a sum of set of statistical data and maybe in a history. So such models comes within a neural network (ANN). I can say. Also, you maybe nowadays we are uh, going through the era of artificial intelligence and machine learning. And that also because it is changing with respect to time u is changing with respect to time like and you are going to do to the input to the system and you are going to determine the output so that is why and uh, this is with respect to time output is you are going to measure it but i want to now relate this information with this information within a certain equation and that equation is called as an model so this model this system may contain a kind of a system properties like it has an its own material it has an own geometry may be kept into a certain environments that environment property also is an important maybe in a certain watery properties like in a balloon if i take an example of balloon and you are going to put an air into this what will happen it will, this boundary goes on extending so this boundary will now increase to the size then it will increase to the size like this and due to that this boundary is continuously changing because it is an elastic boundary most of the time we we may face in our systems like in a there is no change in the boundary and here the boundary property so when you are going to do an a simple analysis you are going to avoid such uh, change in the boundary properties and you are doing an Uh, I may be changing this current into this, and I want to know the temperature. So the here may be a kind of a Peltier, Peltier chip. So what I have to do, I have to have a relation between P and R. So I can now identify which law follows, and that is what it is called as a phenomenon. And that phenomena you are going to identify, and you are going to apply the equation, and that way you are going to. Use this uh, phenomena, then system properties, and finally, you may be having an any of us. That is, system may be in a, your experimental setup, maybe in a real process or real system, or maybe in a, any mathematical equations which relates this output, this output with this input, and that is what a mathematical model. And uh, this mathematical model need to be in a simulate means I want to know. If I'm going to give us some kind of an input to the system, what will be the output? If I'm going to give us one unit of input to the system, what will be the output? 
and that kind of other things we can build. Okay. So what is the way we can simulate? Basically, you can solve these differential equations, linear algebraic equation, maybe in a Laplace equation, maybe in neural networks, graph programs, or maybe in a kind of an equation is equal to E is equal to MC square or kind of an equation. So obviously, then people have thought, why cannot we do a kind of a programming? And this programming, maybe then you can do in Google, Pascal, Fortran, Basics, C++, Java, Python, and this. Initially, programming language for virtual the C or Bobol was very, very limited to a certain kind of a thing. And later on, that features have increased, like you know, hoops programming, so many other features have included. And that's what this is now blowing like anything. And nowadays, Python is one of the best language people refer to programming. And another one is that MATLAB. This MATLAB is not in a language, I can say it is in a toolboxes. And they have created in a small compiler behind this entire programming. And we are going to have some simulations on this. Okay, then programming, then later we even then further development was happening and that further development is uh, instead of doing a coding like in a for something instead of that if i get in a kind of in a blocks like an i have an i have to model i have to model something i will have an mass will be like this and <clears throat> so this is what the way we are representing the systems in blocks okay blocks means and that's what uh, this mit came up with in a programming language like in a scratch so it is not in a scrap but it is a scratch something okay uh, it is a scratch and this programming language is not quite easy you have an if loop you have an far loop you may connect these loops quite easily. You need not to worry about the syntax of the block. So that is what you know, this idea, how to do a block type of programs. And there is you know, one more option, and uh, which we are using from last, uh, uh, maybe in a five to 10 years of period. So that is in a MATLAB simulator, which will connect this entire system in terms of blocks. You can just look at here, there is a you know, blocks, so the signals are passing through these multiple blocks and it is going to give an output input and in between there is a mathematical model so that is what currently so there will be a two approaches in modeling one is basically first principle modeling and data driven in first principle modeling we are using a number using an help we are taking a help of differential equations maybe in a linear algebraic equations any other equation and we are representing this in terms of equations. That is what it is called first principle model. But in data driven, Something 
may be connecting through the neural network and then or maybe monte carlo kind of other things so this is nothing but a based on statistics and that based on what are the data available in this why we are going to do it because uh, this first principle is not much more applicable in this and uh, there are multiple blocks available in the lab you can take any help of it so we'll start with a simple problem solving process what does that problem solving means first of all you are defining certain problem and once you define the problem you have an a bunch of theory you have an a bunch of data and you are going to connect this theory and data and you are going to create some equations so once you got these equations what does the next task is to start uh, identifying which tool is best for and that may be in a kind of in a computer based relations like statistics you can take in help you can have on a numerical methods you can use in a graphics also and you can put into this your entire tool which will get, go into this uh, theory data and equations combinedly and it will result into some of and then you can finally implement uh, uh, simulation okay so we'll start with a simple case and it uh, is something is missing so we'll start with a simple case that is uh, mm. a parachute mob parachute is nothing but a parachute a person uh, so this is a person and uh, coming from top and left it from some place and it has a mass here and it's moving with in some uh, gravity that is g i can say okay. and you want to now determine this is a system or i can say it is in a mass which is moving from what particular height may be height or something when it is left from it so what is going to happen so that is basically mass is uh, remaining constant but due to the gravity gravity means it is and a kind of an acceleration with the constant and this acceleration okay acceleration means it is in a change in the velocity v1 minus v0 divided by time within this time this much amount of change is going to happen and what is that g value is 9.81 meter per second And you want to now relate this with the circle, and how it is possible? Possible is uh, simply you can have a velocity which is depend upon force. That is uh, this is nothing but a second law of motion. And what the, that second law of motion is says force equal to mass into acceleration. And this acceleration is nothing but the change in the velocity. Okay. And now you want to know how much amount of force means if I say it is enough for mass is moving from this upward to downward side. So there will be a two forces. One is downward force and that downward force is the mass into gravity that is the mg. And another force which is opposing this motion that is what it is called as an a uh up uh, that is lift force or something you can say and that lift force is normally c into your velocity c is nothing but a constant and depends on velocity as velocity changes uh this force is going to change means if i typically plot it that is f d versus uh, uh, g and this f d will go on increasing with and what are this ma this uh, this is the relation and for this also that uh, damping
minus CV. This is nothing but a downward force. This is a uh, damping force the other way. And now I can I, I will get this relation. What that relation in says? So change in the velocity depends on my velocity, current velocity. What is the change? That is the slope of that velocity. And if I integrate this, I'll get this relation. And uh, if I integrate this, I'll get this relation. And what this relation says, so this is nothing but my forcing function, which is G is nothing but a uh, gravitational, gravitational force, which is uh, creating an effect on it. And this is my dependent variable. And this T is my independent variable. And C and M are nothing but my sister parameter. So that is what the way we represent this into an equation. And uh, this is my differential equation. I integrated this with respect to time and I got this. So this is what in a simply we converted uh, actual model into a mathematical and we saw it. Okay. And how? So once you solve it, and this is what it is called as an analytical. This is what it is called as an analytical. Now you can put this G value, we can put Why it happens if I look into the net force on acting on my body or what are the parachute? One is downward force and another is an upward force. And downward force is a positive one, upward force is negative one. So once these two forces will get balanced, means if this downward force is 10 Newton and upward force is 10 Newton, total net force becomes zero. And when I, when I say net force is zero, so obviously there will not be a zero axle, any kind of an acceleration. And as there is no acceleration, then obviously there will be a velocity will be constant. That's what the it remains in constant. Why it happens? Because as you go on increasing the velocity, so at certain point upon a time, velocity force, what are this upward force is nothing but a C into V. And V, V will increase to the, till that downward force remains equal to this. And uh, this will become a balancing of this. And later on, we'll have a constant. So this is nothing but the first law. So that is what the way we can do it. Okay. So this is what in a simple analytical solution. The same way we can represent into an now in terms of an approximate solution or i can say it in simulation that is what we are taking into example in simulation I plus one minus Y I divided by delta T. Okay. So this is nothing but an, if I limit delta T, uh, delta T tends to zero or something. I will get in a dy by dt, which is dv by dt, and which is nothing but a derivative. So this dv by dt can be approximately represented with a change in the velocity upon change in. And this is nothing but an approximate because actual curve is this, and you are approximating with this particular. Yes, I am going to approximate. Okay. So that's what it is called. Now, this dv by dt, most of the time, such a simple relation will not be done. What are the relations we have seen in previous days? So that's what, what we have to do. We have to represent this in approximate equation. 
this is nothing but an approximate uh, representation will done if you by dt we are putting this delta v by dt and delta v by delta t is this and uh, which is equal to this equation and now i have i know the initial velocity this is my initial velocity i want to move it to the next velocity i want to determine velocity to the next time instead. Upside two seconds. If I take a step size of two seconds, I'll get this value zero nineteen point six or something. So now you can observe one thing: this value is not accurate because we have approximated your curve within a straight line. So if I want to get in a more accurate result. What is the basically uh, we can do it? We can do in a delta t. We can have in a very small value. Means I need to do so many calculations. But we'll see it to improve upon the results. So this is what an analytical results. Okay. In point four twenty seven. This is uh, solved using this equation. And this is what an approximate equation we got. And we are now going to change this delta t in a smaller and smaller. And we want to observe how much amount of error is there in between. If I consider delta t as in a two-second step size, so here it is in a 16.4, here it is in a 19, a larger difference. So here 32, here 27. There is an approximately three, three to five uh, amount and the velocities change. So if I reduce step size to the 0.5, here it was on 17. And if I still reduce it, So that is what I'm basically here. But in analytical, analytical equations are straightforward. You will get a final solution easily. And that's what uh, this analytical given perfect result at any moment of time. But numerical, based on certain based on some assumption, and that's what you get a lesser, lesser accuracy. There will be a deviation to your actual simulation and numerical. So obviously, we can now conclude that you have another this equation. You solved it in two ways. One is analytical way, another is a numerical way. Analytical way, you will get an integration. You can put up an integration. You can get it. In numerical way, you are going to do an abstract. This is what step by step simulation you are going to do, and that's what we did. So this is what quite easily you can do in MATLAB because what are this kind of an simulation is done, and they have created in small codes for it. You can use these codes. These codes are called solvers. Okay, but going before going to the Nodi solvers, look at what does the way this. D works ordinary differential
so this is connecting within a straight line and that's what it is called as a straight line okay. <clears throat> And the rest of the things is considered to be an Euler circle. If you look into the graphical fashion, this is my point. I want to determine the value of y at time t is equal to i. Then I'm now going to connect with a straight line and I will get a predicted value at this point. And what are this predicted value? And this is my true, and I'll get an and that is what on a Euler's method does. How it is does. So this is my differential equation and we need not to go on integrating it you know the slope you can put into the your equation y is equal to mx plus c m is nothing but my slope here and i can solve it so here so i will get an i will start with an initial condition that is t0 i t0 and y and then i will determine a slope here i'll get the value then next though, i will consider this as in a point base point, I'll use the same equation and I will determine this. So similarly, I can go on doing this. And this is what it is called Euler's method, which connect, connect your this point and this point. And this is called as in a subdomain or you can say it is in a small step size. Within that, you are connecting these two points with this. Now the green color is nothing but an actual or actual uh, So, if you want to reduce this truncation error, so there is isn't one option. You can go for a smaller step size. So, it starts with a smaller error and increase the error with a very small step. And you 100% you can't avoid that. We'll now see the next step. If uh, initially I took it 0.5 as a step size, so I'll get an, uh, some results like uh, 1 and 1.5. Then, if I took an uh, Find two five as in steps. I have to go for uh, four such. Here it was in a one point two five. Here it is now in uh, with a point five step size. Here point two five step size. It is coming one point three nine. So we'll see it into the graph. Here it is in a point point five step. Get these two results right here with a point five step. If I reduce the step size, you can just look at. This is my one step. Then the second, the third. Then obviously that truncation error goes on decrease. That is, it happens. But in this case, what it happens? So I have to reduce the step size. The step size, if it is a smaller and smaller, I'll get in a better. Way. But uh, what are the calculations we need to do? It uh, is a more number of calculations. And so that's what uh, there is an scientist uh, named with an Runge Gutta. Okay, he has started. Y1 as in a first step and slope and what are the step size. So this is nothing but a simple straight line. This is my Y I step. And this is what on a function which will determine the slope. Okay. In determining the slope, what he has done at so when we are going to determine the slope, so I can have on a Y, this is my first point, and this is my second point. So this function has a slope is varying from this point, maybe this point, this is connecting with this. Maybe having a slope here, this K1 I may have, I have on a K2 slope, 
may have on a K3 slope and I have on a multiple slopes within this domain. And I want to now give weightage to K1 with an A1 weightage, A2 weightage, A3 weightage, and I will sum up all this everything. And so that's what it is called as a given in a name as an incremental value, which will take it to the next increment with some weightage. And that's what weighted average you are going to take in a slopes, multiple slopes. such method in n number of steps or n such uh, order method that is n order argument okay so we'll now look at what is the second order and euler's method is a first order but in second order i need to go for two slope in uh, second order i can have on a k1 as in one slope and k2 as in another slope these two slopes and i'll now substitute into this and i'll solve so here you can graphically you can just look at it. Here I'm going to take in a one slope. Here I'm taking another slope, K2. And this K1 and K2, I'm going to give in a sum weightage. I'm going to even amount of weightage. And that A1 plus A2 whole should be equal to me. Because 100% weightage will be covered 50% here, 50%. Maybe 30% here, maybe 70%. Wait, and you will get in if you could have taken on one single slope here your result will be here if i could uh, take an, another slope here my result will be here so he, this point is a more nearer to your actual or analytical result and this gives in a lesser error as i am going to have an approach of rk that is a weighted average slope okay so here you can have on a multiple ways whether to get my this k1 You are this way, and you will get in a better trace in this. So similarly, you can have an another method that is a Radson method, which is uh, somewhat uh, it is uh, what are the middle point you are going to make it to more nearer to the output point or next point. I can give given a K1 here, then I am going to determine K2. One third weightage will be given to the this slope. Two third weightage will be given to the this slope, and it will be determined. And you will get in a general form of that. So that is the way you can have a multiple. So in third order ring, third order method, we can have a now three slopes. I can have a K1 here, K2 here, K3 here. So in most of the book, you will not find a third order method. In the third, third order, you can have three slopes. Is K1 here, then K2 here, and then K3 here, and then I'm going to define K1, K2, and average of this. You may have a multiple formulas for this. So this is what it's called, Nastron method. You can come up with a nearly optimal method. So in fourth order, obviously I need to go for K1. Here, then K2 here, then K3 here, then K4 here, and then finally I will get an average of this. Means
Euler's method is in a single step. Okay, these are the single step. Actual is blue color line, and here you will get in a very large difference between models, relation, and analytical result. And it is much more deviated. If I consider a midpoint second order method, this is our second manner. These are all second order. In second order, also you will find some deviation, but in RK fourth order, you will get a better result. But uh, Runge Kutha methods are used for uh, uh, used for simulation purpose of OD, uh, that is a differential equation simulation. In differential equation simulation, MATLAB has converted this whole logic into an, a functions, and these functions are uh, called as an uh, ODE functions, ODE solver. Also, it's called as an ODE. So, ODE. 2, 3 indicates second order three point formula. That's all. This is a second order three point formula. Okay. And if I say OD45 means it's the fourth order. simulation of simple spring mass damper system and i will i will show it how to do that spring mass damper system so basically it will starts with a mass this is my mass this is in a spring this is a damper and this is a fixed part p here it is in a k equation of this is mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx and you may be putting some force or maybe mounting some motor onto this, which is rotating with respect to uh, time and having enough generating enough force to be of zero sign of omega. So consider this may be in a seems to be in a more mechanical kind of an assimilation, but it is in a simple simulation. You may have gone through subject like an applied mechanics. <laughs> You want to simulate it. Simulate means my system. So you come up with a first definition of system. System, I'm going to give some input to my system and I'm going to do an output from, I'm going to uh, determine an output. And what are the system is nothing but this equation. This is what an equation I can put into this. I'm going to give an input. I want to determine an output. Okay. This what kind of an input I can give? In the varying lines, I want to determine output with respect to any of this. That is what it is done through this equation. That is what a mathematical model for it. Okay. So when we are simulating this, you may observe that OD solver solves OD solver solves only first order equations. Okay. Order equations. And what are the order of this equation? Double dot. Obviously, it is in a second order equation. Okay. And that's what this second order equation to be convert, converted into first order. Okay. That is what in the first step we need to do it. And we need to simulate it. Okay. How to do that first order? How to convert it? We we'll just have an equation mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx. Which is equal to f zero sine omega t. This is my equation. So initially, I will start with an assumption. Assume x is equal to. I need to have one two variables, and I will have an x one dot, which I will assume again x two. Okay, 
and this x1 dot is nothing but my x dot okay this x1 and and if i go Obviously, I will write an x2 dot which is equal to f0 sine of omega t minus k x1 minus c x2 divided by m. So this is my second equation that is a f0 sine of omega t minus c x2 minus k x1. Now I got in a two equation. One is a x1 dot as in a first order equation which is x2 and x2 dot which is nothing but this and that okay now i got these two equations and i want to simulate it okay and now when you are going to simulate it so we need to know how that matlab first of all matlab as in a function od is od may be on a two three or four five years so this OD, OD solver needs this function. Obviously, OD solver will be in the center. OD solver. And this OD solver need in a first model, and that model is nothing but this two dot and this. Okay. So I will now represent this as a simple function can be used for multiple. This I am going to give as an example. this x1 and x2 and to do one and x so with respect to time zero second one one second one three second now we've done this that is what this does so we'll now come back to your uh, uh, matlab uh, simulation and we'll now simulate so this is what on a matlab window i think most of you are aware of this matlab madam am i audible yes sir you are audible yeah uh, i thought my internet network was not good that's what yeah sir because uh, uh, in between your voice is uh, not audible yes yeah, yeah it is breaking yeah but now it's uh, so okay. anyway i am going to record this entire session i am going to put onto the youtube so that uh, if somebody want to listen it in later stage also you can go through it yes sir mm -hmm. So anyway, so we want to now simulate this entire stuff with these two equations. Uh, we have seen those two equations. What are those equations? I have nothing but I am going to create in a simple function for it. Okay. So I will start with a name function in MATLAB, which will automatically create an account. I want to have an, a dx as an output, which contains two numbers, x1 dot and x2 dot. So it is MATLAB, please, within a matrix. It uh, each and every variable will be initially represented in the matrix. That's what any number or single number. I and you need an x1 and x2 so that is the initial okay this is what in a function i defined it and i want to now dx1 which is equal to x of two because uh, this is what on a uh, x contain two numbers x contain two numbers 
dx contain two numbers. dx one and dx two, and x contain x one and x. So that's what uh, I will get in a first number. If I want to access it, I can put into the bracket and you can get it. dx two. I can put it, which is you know that relation that is f zero into sine of omega into d. Okay, minus c into x sub two minus k into x sub one, and then I'm going to put that by yam. Okay, so here we don't know what is the value of f zero. We don't know omega value. We don't Value we don't know k value all these I need to define it here. I'll now define yam equal to one kg as in a mass. C initially I will put it to zero because I, I will assume that my spring mass damper system uh, don't have any kind of an damping in it. Okay. Then uh, C the next is uh, I need to define k also spring thickness that is uh, 1200 meters. Is you find it apply at 1200 Newton force, it is going to uh, I'm going to call this function all the time. And that's what uh, I need in a function. So I'm, it is going to take on the same name as it is. I'm going to say, okay, same name here. Here also I'm going to have the same name. And then, and then there will be a, you are a computer engineer, so you know how to do a writing in a program. So I can now go for an, this is what in a model. And I have to call up an Udi solve. And now right here, it is in the screen. Uh, some damper systems. Okay. Then, where you are going to do in a programming, it has in a three parts. One is input, second is logic, and third is output. So, this is what a uh, three step process in any of the big problem. If you are going to simulate an uh, Amazon or kind of a uh, model an uh, Amazon part, so that is having in a tree. Your user is going to provide input and output is nothing but you know, what is uh, where my package is there and how much time is needed, all these calculations to do, and it will bring the So input is I need in a T span. I'm going to start with a zero second and to simulate up to 10 seconds, like this. Then uh, initial condition, I'll say it is initial displacement at zero, is equal to zero and at dx0, I'll say it is in a dx0 is equal to 0, and uh, I'll uh, have an x equal to, I'll say it is an x0, and as in a two uh, values. Initially, I'll keep this uh, things to the same, and the rest of the things are the same, and then I'm going to use an OD solver t and x is nothing but an output OD23. And then I'm going to use this function as MD as in a function. And then I'm going to provide an a teach span. And uh, I'm going to give an X as an input. Okay. HDMI. HDMI cable. And then I will now simulate and I want to observe it, what, uh, what will be the errors. I will now give the name for this another file, this SMB simulator. Okay. okay. Once you give this name, so you can just observe one thing due to this. So there is an error. And the error is nothing but an apart of parcel of the computer program. So here you can find the SMD must written a column vector. So obviously, this is going to generate in some output at this line, line number 15, means this SMD function is returning something different which is not expected. 
that's what i will go back to this here it should what is the error must return in a column means may maybe dx is returning what is returning dx what it is returning may be in a call, row vector which is not expected from this good uh, so obviously i will now just do it transpose back and i will now save this so rows and columns will be switched off and that is what i'm basically Good. So now you can simulate, you will get results. You, you got an a t equal to 1 to 10 second and the x value is given a 0. So basically, why it happens? Because you have provided 0 input. If I provide here 5 mm or something as an input, so obviously it will go on simulating for you. As it is going on simulating, you can, it will do it, it stops automatically and it is. same we are separating the entire uh, column from the basic matrix and uh, velocity uh, equal to x then i'm going to plot it first figure then plot time versus displacement then Then I can say X label. I'm in second. Then Y label. Let's find in MM. Maybe. Okay. So we can switch out this units. So we can need to keep in a consistent units. I'll have a second figure with velocity. And I can have a velocity in mm. So you'll get in a two graphs here. So here we have kept the displacement to be zero. So obviously I need to change it to the one. So in here you will get in a zero input to my system and zero output. Zero input to my system and zero output. Obviously, these two graphs. This is my displacement profile. Any kind of return, you are not provided any kind of return. So basically, this decrease in the amplitude is not due to the damping. In keep in mind, most of the time we face with difficulty. This is due to the truncation error in the system because we are doing a numerical. We are approximating within each and every step, but you will get a reduced value. See if I Increase the order of my equation. Here I took it uh, second order 3.5. So if I change it to the you know, 4.5, you will, I think you will get reduced value. So there is no damping in it. Obviously, my system is perfectly well. Previously, it is having a more truncation. Now your, uh, your truncation error got reduced. I will not say it will be zero, but it is reduced to the value. So this is what an only one step okay so you are providing a i want to now provide a damping into this i will provide a damping as a coefficient as well, huh? and i want to simulate it you just see it so same it is amplitude is increasing after certain time the amplitude goes to okay? so it will take approximately 10 seconds 
if I increase the And one more interesting stuff I would like to tell you here with the reference to the um, on x axis, I'm going to plot displacement, and on y axis, I'm going to plot velocity. And I want to simulate it how it happened. I want to observe it initially. I will keep a damping to the net zero. Okay, my state of system. In any system, there are certain states that is equilibrium points. And these equilibrium points are nothing but my system will be equilibrium when my displacement of my system, displacement of my mass is zero, velocity is zero. So that is what the point where I will get them. Here it is in a displacement versus velocity. So here you can get in a displacement versus velocity with a zero damping. Okay. If I provide an a five as in a damping, maybe something I done it wrong. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Here it should be not two. Give something to the plus electricity. It will never die, but die out because that is what you know, basically uh, can be. Okay. And one more thing you may be knowing uh, in the spring mass damper system, there is in a uh, total energy of the system is nothing but in a combination of your kinetic energy and potential. In kinetic energy of the system, uh, uh, that kind of energy of the in total system will be uh, equal to zero. No, not it is. It should be equal to one. We'll see it, how it. Now, if you reduce this uh, damping or increase this damping value, what is going to happen? Because each and every system will try to reach to its and this is the case where it is called as the marginal ability of. And stable system always tries to reach to its equilibrium point. Obviously, it has started with a 5, reduced to minus 4, and then it is minus 3, and minus 2, or something, something that will go on. This is what a kind of an exponential stability. So if I put this damping to the negative something, you can play with, play around with this. Values and obviously amplitude goes into In this free vibration, one more thing we want to simulate that is potential energy, kinetic energy. Some of these two energies remain strong. So that law we want to define. Potential energy is equal to that is one by two into the stiffness into the displacement. That is the square of this displacement, half kx. 
Okay, the same is there with uh, kinetic energy. Kinetic energy instead of yeah, k okay, it is in a yeah, then it is in a velocity. Then total energy of my system is a potential energy plus kinetic energy. I'm going to open. I want to plot it on the fourth graph. Time versus potential energy, time versus kinetic energy, time versus total energy. And uh, here I can say it is in an energy levels. Okay. And uh, I can put up on a legend also. Legend. First is potential energy, second is kinetic energy, and third is total energy. Okay. Can I use in a photon or something? In photon, you have to do another definition in each stage itself. But in MATLAB or any other programming, you need not worry. You can define it any place. <laughs> you can get around that. So this is what in a, in a total simulation. I will now reduce that in a simulation. Maybe in a 0.5 something. So here you can just stop. So blue color line indicates potential energy, kinetic energy, and then total energy. Total ray energy line is nothing but a, this is nothing but a total energy. So whatever the exchange that is going to happen into the system is changing the kinetic and total. So it is continuously changing kinetic to potential, potential to kinetic, like that. Change of this is going to happen. And that exchange is uh, here. It is on a initially you provided a displacement, which you have provided an intentionally potential energy. And that will go on increasing and it will be in zero when your displacement becomes zero. Okay? And meanwhile, kinetic energy has increased and it will reach to the maximum at the uh, displacement. And this exchange is continuously happening. So that is what in a total energy remains in the system constant and that is what the way you can verify that so this is what in a, basically you can do in a simulations like this and also you can do in one more thing into this is uh, force values and uh, i can have here i can provide an at some amount of damping into the system and i'll provide an 10 as an 100 as an unknown. and i may be Providing in a square root. And we'll now simulate this, we'll get in a very nice interest. Okay, I'll now increase the time span to the 10 second. Very interesting. I'm going to reduce this five step, but uh, here I'm going to go zero. As an input to the system, this is what harmonic signal. So during this particular phase, so from this end to this end, your amplitude is increasing and decreasing. Okay. So reason for this, this is nothing but it has an excited certain natural rhythm. And due to that, it is so damping is taking help of it. it means it is uh, helping to reduce this. 
in this type of vibrations are called as a transient case. And this transient case, most of the time, you can observe it in each and every system. Maybe uh, some system, electrical system, there is a transient case uh, in computer. Because initially, you will have uh, some kind of a uh, sudden change in the state will result in the uh, excitation of mass that will lead to a uh, transient case. And uh, this is later on, you can find a constant amplitude. We have simulated this and uh, I think uh, we have completed our most of the part. And one more thing, I will change it here. Instead of 0.75, I'll go to the 9.5. You can get in a more interesting. So you can get a more interesting is this amplitude is increasing or decreasing. This is what it is called as a bits phenomenon. If I still increase to the natural frequency, maybe in a 97 or something. Thing. Okay, 97. You'll get in a, such oscillations, and these oscillations are called as a bit. Okay, so maybe in a 92 or something, I'll just do it and I'll increase the time, maybe in a 50 seconds or something. transient phase, maybe a 95. Yeah, it will happen but if you go on uh, doing an uh, uh, iteration, you will get that bit. So this is what on a basically simulations, MATLAB kind of a simulation can be done at and it can be used for a purpose of simulations and kind of thing and lab uh, simulink modeling the same kind of the modeling you can do it here okay and then uh, you can convert into physical system this is what on a simscape modeling it is called uh, model and this is a mass it is uh, represents which are i told you so this represents an equation like an inertia force is equal to mass into x this represents a string force equal to k into x this equations are embedded into this and these are the blocks you have to connect and work on the model for it. Like this, I can have on a single spring mass damper system. It is in a two spring. This is a one spring damper, and this is a mass. And this is another spring, and I can simulate quite a bit. This type of model is called as a simscape type of. Model. I may be uploading some videos of this simscape on YouTube. So you can simulate in a physical system. Mass damper system and uh, physical modeling. Okay. You can do an, a kind of a MATLAB link modeling also. Here it is uh, simulate. If you want to simulate a double pendulum or something, that also you can do it. And you can create a separate pendulum. You can provide a joint in between it. And you can provide. According to it or not, 
simple thing you can do it using it. In similar fashion windshield wiper mechanism you that also you can simulate it okay and these are all new uh, double suspension system so these are the models i would like to give in a demonstration right but uh, due to time constraint it's quite difficult okay so few of the problems i would like to put in front of you that is modeling of the brain photosynthesis artificial photosynthesis on which we can take up our research problems in, and some healthcare devices Maybe in a virus or maybe biomedical kind of applications you can think of it. So thank you, thank you all for being with us and uh, madam. Hello. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. I finished, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. And if someone is having any questions, they can ask. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Amruta, madam. Good morning, sir. Uh, I have one question, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. You are audible. You can ask questions, sir. Yes. One, one of the participants is asking uh, if uh, I want to uh, explain system in mathematical uh, model, uh, then which parameters uh, we can consider? I can't hear your uh, question. Manish sir, please repeat the question. Okay, uh, sir, uh, one participant is asking about if uh, uh, we want to explain the system in mathematical ma model, then which parameters we should consider? Actually, it depends on what type of system it is. It is there. So if you are uh, considering in a simple spring mass damper system, spring, uh, spring value, then damping value and mass value will be some. If you are dealing with a very complicated kind of a system where, uh, so obviously all these parameters, I already shown you one PPT. You need to identify what are the parameters you are, that particular system is working for it and based on that, you can simulate. That is what. Okay. So any other questions, sir? Yes, sir. We have question from participants. Okay. The next question is, uh... Uh, how to model a data where we are predicting a time series data? How to model? How to model a system where we are predicting some, uh, predicting some uh, time series data? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, Amruta, madam, please repeat the question. Hello, Doctor Deshmukh, sir. Am I audible to I you? Think, uh, haan, sir, is, sir is muted. Okay. Yeah. Sir, please unmute yourself. Okay.
डॉक्टर देशमुख सर प्रिंसिपल सर सर यू आर ऑन म्यूट हाँ बोला मैडम माई आवाज एक नो था हाँ यस सर आह आई रिपीट द क्वेश्चन हाउ टू मॉडल अ सिस्टम वेयर वी आर प्रेडिक्टिंग टाइम सीरीज डाटा ओके टाइम सीरीज डाटा तो टाइम प्रेडिक्टिंग टाइम सीरीज डाटा मींस इट्स व्हाट आर द वुडी सॉल्वर्स यू कैन टेक एन हेल्प ऑफ इट एंड यू कैन डिटरमाइन अ टाइम सीरीज uh what are the differences between a mathematical modeling and realistic uh, mathematical equation so basically it is uh, you can just take a simple example that spring uh, that is a suspension system okay in real life suspension system may behave the way it is expe uh, not expected but in actual practice what we are doing that suspension spring you are converting with a single value but in actual practice the single value will not be there that may be in a changing with an displacement so many things will be there that kind of a non linearity will be there in realistic that's what uh, in uh, actual mathematical model we assume the performance of our system within a certain range that is what on a basically we do it and we do the simulation that is the reason that realistic model will, will not be in a, all the time uh, exactly match with your model because there will be a kind of a non linearity there will be a kind of a some kind of a uh, assumptions most of the time we do it all these things yeah yes sir Next question. Yes, sir. yeah if uh, any participant is having any other question you can unmute yourself and you can directly ask any question from participant madam one more thing i would like to share here i already one thing uh, i may be putting some mathematical simulations on to my youtube channel uh, you can just search on suhas deshmukh there you can find in the and uh, people can go through this and uh, they can go through and uh, different videos so initially in here i put into the uh, fpm uh, subjects and similarly you can find in the videos on uh, matlab also here it is in a entire list playlist of it you can find in a matlab videos and uh, cad modeling maybe in a uh, here at matlab sessions uh, they can just go through the uh, simple spring mass damper system only fitting roots of equation if and all the programming also it and similar fashion i am going to put few more videos on to this or in future also like in a simulate in the uh, system which is a uh, realistic model or maybe in a machine learning kind of an tools also if somebody is having any kind of an difficulty they can just mail me or they can even call me there is no problem yes sir thank you very much yeah thank you madam now i would like to propose a vote of thanks uh, on behalf of jspms rajesh shaw college of engineering i would like to thank dr suhas deshmukh sir for accepting and delivering today's session uh, accepting our invitation and delivering uh, today's session on mathematical modeling the session was really good and useful as you have uh, explained how to do mathematical modeling In the simplest way with relevant examples, and how it can be done with ODE, you have explained uh, different modeling simulation approaches. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for uh, sharing uh, your knowledge and time with us.
थैंक यू मैडम थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू सर फॉर स्पेरिंग योर वैल्यूएबल टाइम विद अस एंड योर वैल्यूएबल इंसाइट्स ऑन मॉडर्निंग एंड सिमुलेशन वंस अगेन थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू मैडम चलो the attendance and feedback link is shared in the chat box all participant uh, please feel the attendance yes sir why do you require to feed the data the next session will begin at 1:30 pm